I'm uh, going to take a little bit of a detour, a side um, journey away from the normal uh, what's so great about Christianity apologetic segment that I do at the end of the um, of each podcast. So I'm going to do something a little more in-depth today uh, that goes to the heart of a, a big question that was, well, central to the Reformation, but also a question that people think about today. What is the relationship between faith and works in terms of our salvation? Is salvation by faith? Is it by works? Is it by faith plus works? Uh, this is something that has been debated now for almost, um, well, almost five centuries, I guess, in uh, within the Christian orbit. But it's a question that um, in some ways goes back to the Bible itself and to the Old and New Testament. Let's remember, for example, that in the old Jewish code, there were elaborate sets of works, which is to say codes and commandments, not just the Ten Commandments, but a sort of more detailed list of commandments. I don't even know what the number is, but it's a big number. It's in, there are several hundred commandments that even today Orthodox Jews will follow. Now, of course, Christianity was a, a new order, a new dispensation, but uh, I don't think anyone would say that in the Christian life, uh, works are unimportant. Many times in the New Testament, it talks about doing good works, uh, feeding the hungry, helping the widow and the orphan. In other words, doing acts of love and charity. And so the importance of works is really not at issue here. Now, uh, I want to look at this uh, issue of faith and works in the context of a debate that's emerged in recent years between two very prominent theologians. Uh, they're both Protestant theologians, and the debate is, in theory, within the orbit of Protestantism. However, it has interesting Catholic implications. So whatever your denomination, I mean, I'm assuming in this case that you're looking at this from a Christian point of view, you'll, you'll find yourself in this debate. Now, let me introduce the, the two protagonists. You might be familiar with uh, John Piper. He is a, uh, a reformed theologian in the Midwest. He's written many, many books on justification, uh, justification, of course, by faith alone. And he is a strong, you would say, affirmer of the central principles of both Luther and Calvin, which is that we earn our salvation exclusively through faith. Uh, and in fact, even the term we earn our salvation is misleading because Piper wouldn't put it that way. In fact, what he would say, um, again, echoing Luther and Calvin, that salvation is a free gift. We don't earn it at all. But what gives us, what gives us um, sort of entree to salvation uh, is believing, is having faith, is affirming that Christ's substitutionary atonement was sufficient to pay the price of our sins. And by doing that, we put ourselves into the so-called beloved community and we become part of, uh, we become in a sense, a Christ follower. Now, N.T. Wright is a is an English guy. Um, well, he's a um, research professor of New Testament and early Christianity at the University of St. Andrews. He was for a long time the Bishop of Dur Durham, England. So he's an Anglican. And um, and he is also perhaps one of the leading two or three New Testament scholars alive today. Well, N.T. Wright has done a massive study of the life and work of Paul, the Apostle Paul. And uh, he's the one who has kicked off this debate by offering a radically, well, I won't call it radically new, but uh, certainly from the point of view of Reformation theology, a challenging view of Paul, and particularly of a passage that was very central to Luther, which is Paul's letter to the Romans. So let me start with Luther. Luther was an Augustinian monk, and he was a very serious, a very rigorous guy. Uh, he was not one of those monks who had, you know, a mistress or was basically doing all kinds of stuff on the side, not at all. In fact, he was trying to purify his life to be kind of worthy of salvation. And yet he was very conscious of the huge chasm, the huge distance between himself and God. Uh, and Luther's understanding of the Bible was transformed when he read uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. 
in which Paul talks about the fact that uh, that we have uh, salvation through faith. We have salvation through faith in Christ, uh, that Christ has inaugurated a new order. And for Luther, this came as a kind of epiphany because Luther realized, wait a minute, I don't have to try to climb this sort of tall ladder of good works to salvation. Why? Because that work has been done for me. Christ did it already. So faith is really what is needed, and faith is sufficient. This is the key point. Not just that faith is needed, no one really denied that, but rather that faith is all you need. You don't need anything else. Uh, True, good works can then become a manifestation of the new person you become through faith, but the good works itself do no work. The good works works don't get you anywhere. Faith is what delivers you. And Paul said, uh, and, and Luther got this view from Paul. Paul is the one who, in a sense, opened Luther's eyes. But now we come to N.T. Wright and his study of Paul. And N.T. Wright says, basically, he doesn't put it this frankly, but I'm going to put it frankly. He says, basically, that Luther was sort of wrong. Luther misread Paul. And think of the implications of what he's saying, because if if N.T. Wright is right, if he's right, uh, then what he's saying is that the whole Lutherian theology, the whole idea that uh, Luther got out of Paul, that faith alone is all that's needed and nothing more is needed whatsoever, that idea is also wrong. Uh, It's also wrong because that's not what Paul was talking about at all. Essentially, what N.T. Wright is arguing is that Paul was taking part in a completely different debate, a debate not between faith and works, but as we'll see in the next segment, a debate between the old Jewish code, which Paul calls works and being a new person in Christ in which you don't have to follow those Jewish rules anymore. I'm talking about the debate between the Anglican theologian N.T. Wright and uh, the Reformed theologian John Piper. Now, John Piper affirms a traditional Reformation theology, in fact, This is the theology that's taught in pretty much every evangelical and really beyond that uh, in Lutheran and Methodist and and Episcopal uh, pulpits around the country, namely that salvation is by faith alone. And John Piper gets this from the same place that Luther got it, from the text of Romans where Paul says this. Paul says that salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ and... um, And so this appears to be a statement of the obvious. In fact, it seems almost incomprehensible that Catholics got into a fight over this because don't Catholics agree that we are saved through faith? Um, So it seemed that the Protestant Reformation claim here is inarguable. But N.T. Wright comes along with this massive study of the Apostle Paul, and he says, look, it's not that it isn't there in the text, but what you're missing is the context. That when you look at the context, it's very clear that Paul is not talking about, hey, Christian, uh, should you have faith or should you do good works? That's not the debate going on at all. Uh, Paul, in fact, is considering a different kind of debate. So let's look at what that debate is. That debate goes back to the old Abrahamic covenant. So God makes a covenant with the Jews and with the Jews alone. And in the Old Testament, God says to the Jews that we've got this sort of deal. Uh, and by, by having this covenant, you become part of my orbit. You're part of my sovereignty, if you will. You are under Yahweh. Uh, And how do we know that you're under Yahweh? Well, we know because you're going to follow these codes and and rules and commandments that I'm going to give you uh, that are going to be enumerated in your holy books. And so following the holy books, it's not as if following the holy books gets you to salvation. It's that it's that by following the holy books, you are demonstrating, you are providing a sign that you are one of the chosen people. You are part of God's covenant. And, and the Jews lived this way for really hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, 
when Paul comes along, let's remember Paul is a Jew. And uh, Paul is writing, by the way, the letter to the Romans is not written to Jews. Uh, Paul did write to the Jews. The letter to the Hebrews is written to Jews who have now accepted Christ. And those were Jews who were living in the old Jewish way. They were fall, they were circumcised, they were following Jewish diet, uh, and yet they proclaimed Christ as the Messiah. That was the original Jewish community in Jerusalem, for example. But Christian communities began to spring up in places like Corinth, which is now, of course, in Greece, Galatia, uh, which I believe is now in modern Turkey, and, um, and Rome. And so Paul's letters to the Galatians, to the Corinthians, to the Romans, these are letters to Christians. And what are, what are these Christians worried about? They're worried about the fact that the Jews are saying that you can't be a Christian without following the Jewish codes and commandments. So the Jews are saying, we're the chosen people. If you want to join us with by proclaiming the Messiah, well, you got to do what we do. You got to be circumcised. You got to follow these diets and codes and commandments. And so this is what the Christians are wrestling with. And Paul is coming in with a kind of radical answer. No, you don't. You don't have to follow. Now, Paul, uh, Paul is nowhere saying you don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. Of course not. But what he is saying is you don't have to follow the wide set of rules that Jews follow, that Orthodox Jews, for example, follow today. Christians don't follow those rules. And Paul set the precedent for this by basically saying, no, there's a new rule. And the new rule, by and large, is that we now put ourselves under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the old system is, in a sense, obsolete. So even Jews who proclaim Christ as the Messiah, they can. There's nothing preventing them from. But they don't have to follow the old codes and commandments. Everybody is under the new dispensation. And another way to put it is that spiritually, I mean, historically, Jews remain the chosen people. But historically, the chosen people are now all those who, in a sense, gain their chosenness by becoming a member of Christ's new community. So what does this mean? What this really means is that N.T. Wright is saying that the that that Paul is having a debate, uh, resolving a debate, taking sides in a debate, but it's a different debate. The Pauline debate is over the old Jewish laws versus the new dispensation in Christ, having faith in Christ. Paul is not having a debate, as the Reformation theologians thought he was. Luther thought Paul was considering that for Christians, is it more important to do good works or is it more important to have faith? And N.T. Wright is saying, no, that's not what Paul was debating at all. The dividing line for Paul was between the Jewish laws, not just following laws at all or not just doing good works at all, but following those particular rules and laws or being under the new dispensation of Christ. Now, N.T. Wright goes on to say, I'm not questioning the fact that faith is an indispensable requirement for salvation. I'm not dispensing with the fact that the, I'm not disputing so-called sola scriptura. What's sola scriptura? That we get our understanding of theology from the Bible alone. In fact, N.T. Wright is saying what is that what I'm kind of saying is that Luther and Calvin sort of got the Bible wrong. Now, N.T. Wright is very reluctant, understandably, to criticize either Luther or Calvin. He tends to criticize modern Reformation reform thinkers who are in the Luther and Calvin tradition. So I want to emphasize that what I've done here in giving, admittedly, a kind of abbreviated window into this debate is not only give a somewhat crude summary, but also overstate for the point of clarity what I think is the core issue between John Piper and N.T. Wright. And I think that it's where I come out on these things is I find these very illuminating ways to think in a fresh way about old questions. I'm not really taking sides in this debate. I just want you to be aware of the debate because I think it helps to deepen our spiritual understanding. Subscribe to the Dinesh D'Souza podcast on Apple, Google, and Spotify, or watch on Rumble, YouTube, and SalemNow.com.